What's up, Everyday Blades? It's collection update time. So what I did was just drag my collection out. Uh, I like to do this every once in a while, just kind of go over it and tell you guys why I kept each knife. I get a lot of knives there, so the ones that I keep are usually pretty special. So I'm uh, just going to kind of go over them. We have anywhere from over $1,000 knives to a $28 knife. So we'll start off and get into it with the James Brand Barnes. Now this knife caught a lot of flack for its price when it came out. Uh, and I'll, I'll admit it is high, but we pay high prices for a lot of knives. And this is a great knife. This, the action on this knife is forget about it. The, the fidgetability of this knife is off the charts. And uh, I've been carrying it around for days and I love it. I'm, uh, I bought on the secondary. I got a deal on it, which makes it even sweeter. Moving on to the Tuya Big Belly. This knife caught me by surprise. Uh, I was expecting a, a budget knife to come in. This is a long way from my budget knife, and I'm not talking about price. I'm talking about quality, uh, ease of use. This is a carbon fiber integral with an amazing blade on it. And awesome. I love the axis lock. It's got a version of the axis lock. Man, it just flips right out there with authority. This is just a killer knife. Tuya Big Belly. This beast here, the Microtech Anox, or as a lot of us pronounce it, the Annex. Um, this is a production version made overseas by Riot uh, for Microtech. So the original Anox was a Marfion Custom. A really amazing knife. I would argue every day of the week that this one rivals it. Uh, and in some cases, I think it's better than some versions. It's better than the version that I had previously. And for a few hundred dollars, this knife is amazing. Uh, you, you, you need to own that knife if you're a knife collector. Getting into a couple of my ballys, <clears throat> this knife right here is unbelievable. The feel, the fit and finish, everything about this knife is cool. This is made by Defcon. It has, its claim to fame is a quick connect it also has tools, utensils, all titanium, that quick connect right in there. Trainer, this is a D2 blade here. But the, the best part about this knife is just the overall feel of it. It runs so smooth, it's like glass. This is the best balisong I've ever had in my hands. This is a Mantis Knives balisong, kind of playing on the same thing, but they have a different uh, method of, of quick change. Take that out right there and change out your blade to your trainer or your different tools that they have. This one's a lot heavier, you know, beefier knife. Still a very nice knife. <clears throat> this thing right here is a gem. The CJRB Feldspar. $28. D2 Tool Steel. JG10. Brass pivot collar, centering, dead on the money, build quality, 100%, just an overall great knife for $28. Every knife collector should have one of those in his collection. This knife puts a smile on my face every time I see it. The Rose Cla Rosecraft Little Chonk. The great thing about this knife is, one, it puts a smile on your face because it's it fits the name so well. But two, the handle, the ergonomics, this big fat handle is great. If you had to do a lot of cutting or a, a big task, this is a knife you want to go to. This one's fantastic. And very reasonably priced. Here's another Mantis knife, <clears throat> like the battle song I just showed you. But this is their gear head. Look at the gears turn. So they're not just they're not just there for looks. They're actually part of the knife. They're very innovative over there. <clears throat> Brian Brown Knives Jaeger. I didn't get super excited about this knife, or not as excited as I want to be. It's a very good knife. Don't get me wrong, a lot of people love this knife, and for good reason. It's got great build quality, but it's just not for me. I put skiff bearings in it. The action is just not like what I'd want it to be. Uh, it, it works fine. I mean, I, I, there's I can't put into words what doesn't agree with me about this knife, but I just... It probably won't stick around. 
<clears throat> All right, let's move some of these out. Get another batch in here. Love, love, love this knife. So I'm not a Hinderer fan. I don't like the XM18 or any of those. They just don't do anything for me. This fire tech is fire. M390 blade, G10 scale with a titanium liner, titanium lock side. It's got the triway pivot system, so it runs on bearings, washers, nylon, whatever you want. I haven't had a thumb a thumb disc knife in a long time. Just forgot how great the deployment is with those, man. It's just wonderful. So this is the Chavez Tac. This is a cool little knife. M390 blade steel, Tonto blade, beautiful grind lines. Also made by Riot. Riot makes great knives. Love the skull clip. Just a cool little knife. It'll stick around. This one was a shocker to me. I found this one in um, a local gun shop, Collector's Firearms. And this is the Tour Knives Merchant 2.0. And it is a hundred percent. The action on this is just fantastic. It feels good. The ergos are great. This one's PVD with the stone wash scale, and that's the way I like knives. The ergos are just killer on this thing. This is the Chris Reeves killer for quite a bit less money. This has been one of my favorite knives for a long time. This is the Grimsmo Knives Rask. The build quality of this thing is second to none. It may look like a plain knife for those of you that have never held one, but they are unbelievable. RWL 34 steel. I think that's mostly what they use on most of their knives. This one has contoured scales, anodized purple with a Tomascus clip. Just 110% build quality. All right, let's move some out and keep moving. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So, I haven't had an automatic in a long time. I used to have a couple of Microtechs that I liked, but I'm just not an automatic guy. And I couldn't pass this one up. This one is just cool. The Protech just does automatics right, man. Look at that action. Killer. I love the tuxedo look. That's why that one got picked up. All right, Alien Knives DX2 MIDI. This is a really reasonably priced knife that is a very good knife. This is a budget knife. It uh, doesn't have all the flare and whistles, but this is a, a knife with great ergos, D2 tool steel. Oh no, it's 14C28N, not D2. My bad. Very nice stone wash blade. I think the knife is around fifty dollars. That's why it's in the collection. I like budget knives. This is the best nine forty ever made. The nine forty two thousand and one, I believe, special edition. They only made a thousand of them. This one's an S ninety V with titanium flat scales. This is the perfect nine forty. I bought that knife twice. This is a killer. Concept has come out the gate with both feet in there, kicking everybody in the neck. They are making killer knives. This is the Fenrir. Just a cool knife. There are some amazing versions of this in Damascus with some beautiful G10 inlays. Just a great, great knife, man. Concept is on fire. We'll grab another Concept. This is another concept. Check that out. This is the TAC EDC. This version has the Tamascus with the, uh, I believe, is it S35? Yeah, S35 VM blade. Beautiful grind lines. Button lock, flipper, and, wait for it, thumb stud. Triple deployment. They all work fantastic. I'm a sucker for button locks. I'm a sucker for Tamascus. That won't stay. Speaking of Tamascus, this one's a little bit 
fingered up, but this is the QSP Penguin, but in a frame lock with the Tamaska scale. It's actually a Mokotai scale with a Mokotai clip. Beautiful, 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 awesome knife. This is one of my size example knives that I use a whole lot, obviously. Get this nasty tape off of there. Oh, well, you guys know I use it. Um, cut, cut down some boxes last night. <clears throat> Pair of three, lightweight, and CTS BD1. Needs sharpening. I've cut up a lot of boxes with it. I've kind of dulled it up. But this I use mainly for a size comparison and for like cutting up boxes and stuff around the house because it has such a thin blade. This is a beaut. The Whippersnapper. Love this knife. Olamic Customs Whippersnapper. They do beautiful work. Made in the USA. Love that knife. Front flipper. Not a big fan of front flippers, but I love that knife. Alright, let's keep scrolling. Still got a ways to go. <clears throat> oh. Alright. That's the one to drop, I guess, because it ain't going to get hurt. Alright, this is my most expensive knife in my collection. This knife, I believe, is about $4,000. I, of course, did not pay that. It's a little bit dirty, but it has a diamond wash blade. Titanium scales. Unbelievable action. This is the Marfion Borka SBSP. Really, really awesome knife, but really, really ridiculous price. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I love it. It also has a tritium insert in the bottom that glows. Not going to be able to see it with these lights, but it grows, glows green. This is pretty much the same knife with a G10 scale and a drop point blade. This is a special edition that comes with a big uh, pelican case and a um, poker chip coin with it. That's actually worth quite a bit itself. This one, ST, STEC. This is a budget line knife that is very, very good. 14C28N. The flipper works fantastic on this knife and you get a ton of blade with it. This is just part of my budget collection. I, I, I've got a thing for budget knives, man. I, I love a great knife that doesn't cost a lot of money. Speaking of, Orion button lock. Man, the button locks get me. I just love them. This thing, the action is killer. This is the, I think it's the Orion Solaris. It's one of the Orions. There's two of them. I believe it's a Solaris. Micarta scales, cool pivot, button lock, of course. Nice milled pocket clip, titanium. Just a cool little knife. Very, very affordable. Move some of these bangers out of the way. <clears throat> All right. This has been popular here lately and for good reason. This is the EMP Nimble. And I have the upgraded version with the Tamascus clip. Love this knife. I believe it's M390 blade. But this knife surprised me. It's a lot thinner than I thought it would be. It's a little bit smaller than I thought it would be, which is a good thing. I thought it was going to be oversized. I like the size and shape. I love the frag pattern. It's just killer. Uh, that shouldn't be in there. All right. This is my other one of my other size example knives that I got at a pawn shop for $40. This is the Benchmade Griptilian in the 20CV G10 version. Awesome knife. One of my first good knives was that exact knife a long time ago. This is the Cold Steel Silver Eye in S35. And what I love about this knife, of course the triad lock is awesome. You're not going to break it, but see the detail in that thumb opener? I mean, it's just a never miss. This knife is made to be slow rolled open. Very cool. Nick me a little bit. We're going to make it though. All right. Next. 
This is the Best Techman Dundee. This is Best Tech's budget line that's coming out. And this is a nice flipper for the, I think, $50 that it is. Very solid. Best Tech makes amazing knives. A damn uh, last knife got me, boy. This is a knife, an SO SOG knife that I found at a pawn shop that I don't normally buy. Uh, but this one had an access lock on it and it's D2 so I picked it up I think it was 10 or 15 dollars hopefully the bleeding will stop here in a minute this is the Spyderco Salt 2 I got that at a pawn shop um, I think I paid 30 dollars or something for it it's not a very expensive knife but this knife has no washers in it, believe it or not. It runs on plastic, and it's made to work on the bottom of the ocean, and it won't rust. This is the 4MAX Scout by Cold Steel. This is the largest folder I own. I love this big beast knife. It's got AUS 10, uh, is it AUS 10A? Yeah, AUS 10A, which is all you need in a huge blade like that. I just love this thing, man. That's why it sticks around. All right, let's clear them off and get the last round here. So this is um, God, I'm going blank. TRM at uh, TRM Neutron in titanium. I love, love, love this knife and the Atom. Both amazing, amazing knives. Super thin blade steel, very slicey. You can take the scales off of these with just two screws and change them out and swap them out. That's one thing that I love about this knife. All right. This is a killer this year. This was probably a contender for knife of the year this year. The McNeese 3.5, Mac 2 3.5. Awesome stone wash blade, killer skills, titanium skills. The action on this thing is just stupid, unbelievable. Love this knife. Those are still hard to get. I bought this knife, I think three times. I've liked this knife so much. I love the scales on this thing. RWL 34. This is of course the Norseman by Grimsmo. This is just a great knife. I love this thing. Look how thin that thing is. Crazy. Action is just second to none. And one of the best for last. This is the... Okay, my mind just went blank. <laughs> it would It would on the last knife, right? Um, give me just a second here. This is the Rosie Roosevelt. My God, what the hell happened? It sucks getting old, guys. Uh, this is the Roosevelt. This is, of course, all of you knew that. You were all probably screaming at me to say it because everyone knows what this knife is. I had two of them. I sold one. Uh, I actually thought I'd like the golf putter milling better, and it's beautiful. But for some reason, I just love this plain scale against that anodizing. And this one's not Magna Cut. This is the... Uh, I forget the name of it, but this is a uh, completely rust-proof blade. This one also has the um, Zerka tie clip. And that is it, guys. That's every knife in my collection right now. I uh, appreciate you watching. Sorry to keep you so long. God bless you and your families. Say a prayer for our country. Good night.